we think it's time to look at money. The stock market is our, uh, our point of interest right now. Joining me on the line is Phil Scott, who's the head of advisory broking, nonetheless, from Simple Investments based in Godalming. Good morning, sir. Good morning, James. Right, so let's talk uh, money markets. Of course, uh, stock market opened at seven this morning. Uh, they've been uh, pretty good over the last recent few months, haven't they? Well, they have indeed. If you look at a chart, frankly, James, since 2009 until where we're trading, let's say, today, the, the FTSE 100 has nearly doubled over that period. Uh, that's a great example of, uh, you know, one should invest when f- things feel dire. Credit crisis was an awful time, as we all remember back in 2009. That would have been a good time to buy shares if you'd been brave enough. Since then, four, four and a half years later, we've seen FTSE double. Uh, I say that, that's the index itself, which has doubled. And within there, there are obviously loads of different companies, and some of those have probably gone up by a factor of four over that period. So equity investing, which is where we're at in here, has been uh, a good place to be over that period. In terms of the recent past, we've seen a bit of a retrace in the market. There's a bit of concern that federal, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S. may come off the monetary stimulus pedal. That has made shares wobble a little bit, but um, certainly investors who have been backing equities for the past three or four years have had a good ride. Yeah, the, the question, I suppose, here is all to do with the interest rate, I suppose, because you stick your money in the building society, you're not going to get a huge return, have a little bit of a gamble on the stock market, and, well, you, you know, it could be cha-ching. You, you've hit the nail on the head, and I think a lot of people, and in this building we look after private clients in the main, individuals, people have probably looked at those derisory savings rates, and obviously if you pair those derisory savings rates up with inflation, you're actually probably losing money effectively on your savings by leaving it in the bank. So you could focus on something like GlaxoSmithKline, um, the pharmaceutical giant, or even Vodafone, obviously another very well-known name. These companies will pay you 5 6% by way of annual income, dividend income. Well, obviously, that's boatloads better than the interest rate in the bank. Obviously, we just need to be aware that in the process, your capital is at risk because the Vodafone share price will be up and down. Uh, as will other share prices. But if, if you take an investment view, if you take a medium-term view, which is perhaps uh, some would say the best way to invest, that's debatable, by the way, where well, you can see why there's total return attraction out of shares. Share price growth plus dividends, and you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people have been buying shares on that basis. So at the moment, if I were to sort of give you a £1,000, is there a particular area that you'd stick your money in as far as stocks are concerned? <laughs> Well, that's always, that's always a good question, and day-to-day I'm always trying to work out what, what, what sector should we be coming out of and what should we be adding. Uh, I would suggest that something like the UK construction market looks a good risk-reward recovery play right now. Of recent, we've seen some green shoots of recovery coming out of the UK. Of course, we've got a new uh, governor of the Bank of England coming in, a Canadian, a guy called Mark Carney, beginning of July. I think he'll be working hard to obviously stimulate UK economy further. Construction shares have struggled like heck. Names like Balfour, BT, Carillion, you know, there's, a, there's two there. If you look at their share price graphs, they've had an awful time for, for quite a while, profit warnings, all that kind of stuff. But that, to me, would be the type of place you might look. Good dividends, and as I say, the potential for the share price to move up. See, some people who don't really understand money might be going, well, hang on, why is the stock market doing so well, and yet the economy isn't growing? Very good question. It's long been shown that there's a big disconnect between economic reality and the level of the stock market, as weird as that is to get your head around. Essentially, the market is a leading indicator. People will buy shares in anticipation of better times 12 months, 18 months down the line. So although at the moment we we may look at GDP reads and other economic metrics which show things are struggling, shares are high because people are saying, well, that's now. I'm interested in where we're going to be in 18 months, so I will buy shares now. Uh, So there's one reason. Um, The other reason, I think, is that, as we touched on just earlier, it's a case of where does one go with capital? If it's individual savings, me and you, James, or if it's big institutional investors who have money to put to work, some would say that shares are the best option or the least worst option because of those dividends that we've discussed and because there is that potential for growth going forward. So it's an odd dynamic, but last, the final point to probably make is that FTSE 100 London-listed shares 
These are international businesses, GlaxoSmithKline, BP. I think there's more Americans employed by BP than there are Brits. These are international businesses with very much emerging markets focus, Asia, Africa, big growth regions, India. So therefore, these economies are doing better, and many of these companies are exposed to these regions and not so UK-centric. Worth bearing that in mind as well. Phil, good talking to you. My pleasure. Cheers, James. All right, from Simple Investments in based in Godalming.